Stacey Abrams reportedly raked in big bucks between Georgia governor bids. So basically, she got super rich. When Stacey Abrams first ran for Georgia governor in 2018, she was worth slightly more than $100,000. Today, as the Democrat makes a second bid for the office, her bottom line has improved substantially. In state disclosures filed last month, Abrams said she is worth $3.17 million, a far cry from the $109,000 in her bank account when she ran four years ago, the Associated Press reported on Tuesday. And yeah, that's a pretty darn big jump. That is 30x in four years. So in the years since her loss to Republican Brian, I guess Brian Kemp, Abrams has become a major national figure in the Democratic Party, playing a crucial role in get-out-the-vote operations in 2020 that helped President Biden become the first Democratic presidential candidate to win Georgia in 28 years. Weeks later, the Peach State elected two Democratic senators, Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, a result for which Abrams also received credit. Abrams also earned $6 million during those years, primarily through the $5 million she got in payments for books and speeches. And here's the thing. Anytime you see a political individual making money from speeches, you always kind of have to look at that a little bit side-eyed, Because there's so many politicians, so many former presidents, so many former governors that basically make millions upon millions of dollars talking, right? But really, it's just like big companies that just slap them with a massive check. So the gubernatorial candidate who was slammed in 2018 for her paltry bank account and lack of business acumen is now being called an out-of-touch elitist by her critics. Garrison Douglas, a spokesman for the Georgia Republican Party, accused her of using her campaign as a platform for her own financial gain, and former President Donald Trump ripped her for living in one of those gorgeous multi-multi-million dollar houses. In response, Abrams has pointed out that her Republican rivals have an even higher net worth than she does. Kemp reported $5.2 million in assets on a disclosure last month, while David Perdue, the former senator and one-time Dollar General CEO, who is challenging Kemp in the GOP primary, has said he is worth $50 million. Now, that's pretty crazy, right? Being worth $50 million. So it is remarkable to me that success is now being demonized by the Republicans, Abrams told AP. I believe in success. I believe that every person should have the opportunity to thrive. And because I had three years where I was in the private sector, I leveraged all three years. And in that time, I've done my best to not only be successful personally, but to do what I can to help Georgians, she said. Abrams, who before running for governor in 2018, spent six and a half years as the minority leader of the Georgia House of Representatives, became a sought-after speaker following her defeat to Kemp. She gave 37 paid speeches in 2021 and has written or co-written or reissued six books since 2019 with another being reissued later this year, according to Seth Bringman, an Abrams campaign spokesperson. The spokesman. Abrams was also paid more than $700,000 over three years as executive director of the Southern Economic Advancement Project, the report said. Over those years, Abrams has paid off her student loan, congrats to her, credit card, and IRS debt, and went from having $5,000 in a retirement account to a portfolio of $725,000 in stocks and bonds. Now, here's the thing. Skipping over whether or not how she made the money was, like, good or not, like, skipping over that, I do like seeing anyone doing this. I like seeing people who pay off their student loans, 
their credit card, their IRS debt, and ends up increasing their retirement account. I do like that for anyone, right? Because I want everyone in life to be doing well financially. Like I want everyone to be doing better, right? Just a personal viewpoint of mine, like I like to see people just doing better financially. I hate seeing people having debt because the way that I view people having debt is that basically people who have debt are basically a slave to that debt. They are a slave to the companies that gave them that debt for anyone. She also bought a $1.2 million home just outside Atlanta as well as a house for her parents costing $370,000 on which she owes $280,000 on a mortgage. Now, that is something that I do not like. Hey, you made enough money, just buy it in cash for your parents and give it to them as a gift. You know, it's not clear how much Abrams is paying in taxes or how much money she has donated, but the report said she set aside $560,000 in a tax account. That seems pretty low for uh, her taxes. Bergman said the candidate would release her tax returns after she files her 2021 forms, and Tate Mitchell, a spokesman for Kemp, said he will provide further documentation if necessary, but added that the disclosure forms should be sufficient. Purdue spokeswoman Jenny Sweat said he has filled out-of-state and federal disclosure forms and noted he has been transparent about his finances. And with post wires, okay, uh, it doesn't seem like there's any comments about this. And here's the thing, right? I mean, I don't really think like this is like necessarily that big of a deal. I mean, it's not really that surprising, right? And I think to really understand too, right? These politicians don't just make money because they're politicians and potentially are doing maybe something shady in terms of like trying to make the money with these speeches and all that kind of stuff, right? But it's also... Once you become a politician, and once these different SPACs end up spending millions of dollars marketing you, you're now a national name, meaning you have basically become a, in quotes, a national celebrity, thus meaning there is going to be a demand for you now that didn't exist before. And that's something that people don't even uh, take to consider right like it's actually a kind of like a surprising thing is like once you get a certain amount of people paying attention to you you can make a lot of money like a lot of money and it's like a pretty disgusting amount of money too now also i really wanted to check out this quick thing because i think this is like so messed up right this article albert Pajols announced his divorce days after wife's brain surgery, <laughs> right? Like, how crazy is that? So, Albert Pajols announced Monday that he and his wife, Deidre, are splitting up after she underwent successful surgery to remove a brain tumor. I've been asked a lot of questions over the past few days regarding what's been going on at home, and sadly, after 22 years of marriage... I have made the decision to file for divorce for my wife, Deidre Pujols, said in a statement released by his agent, Dan Lozano. I mean, come on. I, anytime I see something like this, like what? You didn't have the balls to bloody say this yourself? I realize this is not the most opportune time with opening day approaching and other family events that have recently taken place. These situations are never easy and isn't something that just happened overnight. The off-season, Pajols signed a one-year deal to return to the Cardinals, where he played from 2001 to 2011. He and Dietrich had been married since 2000. And as a devout Christian, this is an outcome that I never wanted to see happen. Pajols continued in his statement, for many long days and nights, I prayed, asking the Lord for his guidance. And hey, here's the thing, right? If you uh, are a Christian and you do the marriage vows of the original marriage vows. Within those vows, they say, till death do us part. In sickness and health, till death do us part. So, you know, kind of breaking that rule, you know. 
Pedros concluded his statement by noting that he and Deidre remain committed to raising their five children in a loving and safe environment. I am thankful for the five beautiful children that we brought into this world and remain committed to raising them in a loving and safe environment. I ask that you please respect our privacy and the privacy of our five children during this time. Yeah, pretty interesting. No comments on this one either. Yeah, feel free to give your thoughts on all of this. We'll see you in future episodes. If you want to learn how to get out of debt and manage your money, go to 40inbox.com.